Authorities are investigating an officer-involved shooting in Augusta. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. One person is dead and another is injured following a crash in LaGrange. And Governor Janet Mills unveiled a plan to help Maine's labor shortage. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more on these and other stories in just a moment. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Hey Susan, happy Monday afternoon. A small craft advisory is posted through Tuesday morning at around 10 a.m. because of active surf that will be expected along the coast moving forward. On land though, not too bad. We just have some clouds that are developing. We'll call it a partly cloudy sky today. There are a few returns on the radar though, but I don't think anything is reaching the ground. So overall, we're gonna stay dry out there today with a partly cloudy sky as we do move forward. Zooming things out the bigger picture though, while we stay quiet here, thanks to high pressure further down to the south. I mean, we're on the kind of the northern edge of that system there that will mainly stay in Canada. We'll notice though some frozen precipitation across some parts of the country as well. Some freezing rain developing across parts of Illinois and areas to the south and west as well. Travel will be a mess for those areas. But for us though, a whole different story. We'll be under a partly cloudy sky today, but some clouds moving in by tonight. But early Tuesday morning, those clouds begin to get out of here though, so we'll have some sunshine as we get towards Tuesday morning. Now the winds can range up from around 10 to even 20 miles per hour at times for the rest of today and also in the parts of tonight in a few spots. So notice we'll hold Hold on to the winds as well through parts of your Tuesday. So kind of a breezy start here across the state. Middle 30s for the rest of this afternoon, partly cloudy and breezy. A southwest wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. For tonight, lower 20s and a partly cloudy sky. Southwest wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. For tomorrow, middle 30s, mostly cloudy and breezy. The north wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. We'll call it a partly cloudy sky with more clouds later this evening. Temperatures in the 30s early and then cooling off. You'll Full five day forecast is coming up. Susan? Thank you, Devin. Authorities are investigating an officer involved shooting in Augusta. Police say it happened around 11 o'clock last night at a home on Northern Avenue. Police were called to the home for a report of a man who was armed with a gun and threatening other residents. Officials say after officers made contact with the man, he fired shots at the officers. They returned fire, although there's no word if he was injured. However, a reporter says medical examiner office personnel are on the scene. The state police tactical team is reportedly also on the scene, but police say they don't believe there's any risk to the public. Traffic is currently being rerouted from the area and drivers may face some delays. One person is dead and another is injured following a crash in LaGrange. It happened Sunday after a vehicle went out of control and rolled over. Grace Blanchard has more. The sheriff's office received a report of a motor vehicle that had gone off the Medford Road here in LaGrange, uh, overturned into a stream that's behind us here in a very curved portion of the road. Several first responders were on the scene of a fatal vehicle crash Sunday morning that left one person dead and another injured. According to the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office, a sedan lost control on the snow and ice packed roadway and rolled into a stream. Behind us there's a small stream that passes through here that is uh, open waterway. Uh, we have the vehicle that's overturned and kind of underneath the uh, bridge embankment or what used to be a bridge embankment here. According to Sheriff Morton, Cold Water Rescue located a deceased individual who was trapped inside the vehicle while deputies located a second individual who managed to escape with minor injuries. Morton says this is not the first time there's been an accident of this nature in the area. Uh, to my knowledge, we have had crashes here. I believe there has actually been a fatal crash in this exact area in the past. Several area residents we spoke with expressed concerns over the lack of barriers between the road and the stream, but declined to appear on camera. The chairman of the town select board says the board will be meeting on Tuesday to review the circumstances and see what can be done to keep an incident from occurring again on this road. Meanwhile, the sheriff's office says they will be doing a thorough investigation. Putting the facts together is the most important thing that we can do for family and friends and make sure that we accurately tell the story as to what happened here. Uh, In LaGrange, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The identities of those involved have not been released. Authorities continue to investigate a deadly snowmobile crash in Franklin County. According to the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, 69-year-old Frank Clifford of Andover was traveling northbound on the ITS-89 trail in Lang Township Friday. He drifted left across the center of the trail and then crashed into the woods, colliding with several small trees. Maine Game Wardens and the Rangeley Fire Department responded to the scene and found Clifford deceased near his snowmobile around 10.30 a.m. 
Clifford was taken to Wiles Funeral Home in Farmington for examination by a state medical examiner. An initial investigation indicates that speed appears to have been a factor in that crash. Officials say Clifford was reportedly wearing a helmet at the time. The crash remains under investigation by the Maine Warden Service. A man was killed over the weekend following a car accident in the town of Lebanon. The York County Sheriff's Office says it happened around 7 o'clock Saturday night in the area of Creamery Road. 32-year-old Henry Berthum of Acton was killed in the crash. Investigators say it appears he was traveling on Route 202 when another vehicle lost control and crossed into the oncoming lane where it struck his vehicle. He was killed and the other driver and passenger were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. A Vassalboro man has been arrested after being indicted for manslaughter in the death of a woman near a campfire. 31-year-old Travis Mitchell was arrested around 7 o'clock Thursday night. He was indicted by the Kennebec County Grand Jury Thursday for his alleged role in a fire that killed 46-year-old Liza Bragg of Albion in May 2023. Bragg was burned while she was standing next to Mitchell as he attempted to start the fire. Other people with her at the campsite called 911. She was taken to a local hospital and then transported to Maine Medical Center in Portland where she died from her injuries. Mitchell was taken to the Kennebec County Jail where he posted bail. He is scheduled to appear in court in April. Police have arrested a suspect in connection with a robbery at a Waterville convenience store. Around 11 o'clock Friday morning, 42-year-old Casey Clifford uh, Vassalboro was arrested and charged with robbery. Officers were called to the Big Apple convenience store on Elm Street just after 7 p.m. on Wednesday. The person who allegedly robbed this store had already fled the scene with an undisclosed amount of cash by the time they arrived. Glidden was unable to pay the $2,500 cash bail. She is being held at the Kennebec County Jail. The Belfast and Monroe Fire Departments fought flames at a property in Swanville Friday. Crews were called around 4 p.m. to 253 Stevens Road. According to Belfast Fire Chief Patrick Richards, the single wide mobile home was in the process of being demolished when the demo crew on the scene left to drop off scrap metal and debris at a junkyard. They returned to find the home had collapsed onto the burn pile they had previously started. It was fully involved when we got here, but. Uh... You know, it was, it was a demolition site, so there's really no, nothing to save, so. Chief Richards confirmed no one was injured. The case involving access to Maine's GOP primary ballot for former President Donald Trump will move forward to Maine's highest court. On Wednesday, Superior Court Justice Michaela Murphy decided to withhold a ruling until the U.S. Supreme Court issues a decision in the state of Colorado's case in order to provide consistency and avoid voter confusion. On Friday, Secretary Bellows appealed that decision, requesting the case move to the Maine Supreme Judicial Court to seek review. Her statement reads in part, quote, I know both the constitutional and state authority questions are of grave concern to many. This appeal ensures that Maine's highest court has the opportunity to weigh in now before ballots are counted, prompting trust in our free, safe and secure elections, end quote. Secretary Bellow's full statement is on our website, foxbangor.com. With Maine facing a labor shortage in several industries, Governor Janet Mills unveiled a plan to help fill those jobs. Friday, the governor proposed a state office of new Americans. Brad Rogers shows us why she believes it's vital to Maine's future. This is my job. It's very nice for me. I saw. Antony Katita was a seamstress in Angola. She's now one of nearly 80 employees at American Roots in Westbrook. We started this company to prove that you could make things in America and treat people with dignity. The company manufactures custom clothing. During the pandemic, they made PPE for hospitals. Its co-founder says a state office for new Americans will open doors for new Mainers and open the state to new business. The Office of New Americans will serve as a critical component to attract the type of businesses we need in this state. The governor says the office will help fast track certifications for immigrants with professional skills. This office will help us fully harness the contributions of new Americans who've chosen to make our state their home. One of the driving forces behind this plan is the critical shortage of workers Maine has faced since the pandemic. Governor Mills says by integrating new Americans into communities and the economy, we can address the state's workforce needs. The Office of New Americans will provide the tools, resources, and the guidance needed for new Mainers to thrive and succeed. 
The bill has bipartisan support. A Republican co-sponsor says it will also address the influx of asylum seekers. It is about helping our communities, our neighborhoods, and our schools handle the unprecedented numbers of new immigrants. It's because of people migrating to our state that our workforce is largely able to stay afloat. American Roots first employee now owns a business in Portland. I was able to earn a living buy our first home and put all three children to, uh, through college. She says an office for new Americans means more opportunities. On ABC 7 News at noon, hundreds of new housing units are currently under construction in Bangor. We've got the details when we return. Did you know 80% of women are struggling with hair damage, just like I was? Dryness and frizz could be damaged hair that can't retain moisture. New Pantene Miracle Rescue Deep Conditioner with first-of-its-kind melting Pro-V pearls. Locks in moisture to repair six months of damage in one wash without weigh down. Guaranteed or your money back. For resilient, healthy-looking hair. If you know, you know it's Pantene. Your local professional eco-friendly office space partner is Levesque Business Solutions, your one-stop shop to get the job done. Handling all your office furniture and printing machine needs at an affordable price. Offering full system integration into your workplace and local service on everything we sell. We can even remote monitor your system with just-in-time inventory and service need assessments. Little to no downtime gives you peace of mind. At Levesque Business Solutions, your solution is only an email or a phone call away. Hi folks, this is Barry Gass of Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear in Orono. We've been in business since 1911, and our third generation family owned business can't wait to show you our unique line of Western Wear and Western Tack. We have Western boots, shirts, hats, belts, and buckles for the entire family. And Western Tack, from bridles to saddles and everything in between for your horse. Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear, where the American West comes alive in Maine. I got hurt in a car accident. Give me one good reason why I should call the twos. How about three great reasons you should call us? One, we make it easy. You can hire us right from your phone and you never have to leave your house. Two, it's fast. Read the result. Just listen to this. Lowry and Associates got me $195,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you're hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call two, 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 22, 22. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs, supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. The cost of buying a home in Maine is up. Maine listings say the average price of a single-family home rose more than 6% in December compared to the same month last year. The average price is now $350,500. President of the Maine Association of Realtors, Paul McGee, says, quote, Throughout Maine, real estate markets continue to be impacted by increased interest rates and sellers' ongoing reluctance to list due to supply demand issues in the industry that is experiencing. This in turn prolongs the shortage of homes available for sale. Oxford County saw the biggest price increase at more than 15 percent. Hancock County came in second with more than 13 percent. Hundreds of new housing units are currently under construction in Bangor in order to meet that high demand. Our Peter Dubois spoke to the city's director of community and economic development to learn more. We have a lot of units under construction. From a tiny home park to affordable senior living complexes and several market rate housing developments, the city of Bangor has recently approved 10 construction projects that will collectively bring 359 new housing units to the city. Director of Community and Economic Development Ann Krieg says it's part of the city's efforts to attract more people to live and work in Bangor. Our larger employers like the hospital and other employers are saying it really affects their recruitment when um, they hire people at all levels um, all salary levels to be able to find housing quickly. 
Among the latest approved projects is a brand new development on a four-acre parcel of land along Sunset Avenue that formerly belonged to the University of Maine at Augusta. The school agreed to sell that unused land to Bangor Housing. You know, we're looking at all of these, these pockets of property that, um, you know, have been vacant for a long time, but they're in a great location to try to say, hey, what can we do with this? All 10 housing projects are expected to be completed this year. To learn more about housing progress in the city of Bangor, click the link in this story on our website, foxbangor.com. In Bangor, I'm Peter Dubois for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. There have been recent reports from other media outlets that those humorous phrases on main DOT traffic signs may be going away. Well, we went to get some answers and found that isn't necessarily the case. Here's more. I think there's a way you can be safe and smile at the same time. The Federal Highway Administration has issued new guidelines stating that messages with obscure or secondary meanings, such as those with pop culture references or ones intended to be humorous, should not be used on electronic road signs. But Maine DOT Commissioner Bruce Van Note says he's hoping for the humor to stick around. We like using them. We'll have to review the guidance more and figure out what we can and can't do. We think it's a potentially effective tool with safeguards to get across basic safety me measures in a way that's not preachy, but it's a little humorous. And those we spoke with seem to agree. I think the signs are awesome. They add a little bit of humor while reminding people to stay safe. Don't bother me one bit to see that stuff. Makes me laugh. Um, I would say it's good advice a lot of the time and gets people to think twice. They warn you of things of hydroplaning, uh, texting and driving, drinking and driving. However, Van Note says the FHA believes humorous signs could be misunderstood or distracting to drivers. Well, that's not something that uh, they want those signs to be used for. Any changes to what can be shown on the signs would not take effect for another two years. And in the meantime, Van Note says those messages aren't going anywhere. It's two years from now. It may not be mandatory. It may be guidance. And so it's too early to tell exactly what's going to change. But, uh, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Van Note says the department does not use humorous messages during severe weather or poor traffic conditions. In Bangor, David Ledford. ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. After the break, young women are more at risk for lung cancer. We'll tell you about it when we return. Because I have both Medicaid and Medicare, I got a special Medicare Advantage plan from WellCare. It's called DSNP. That's D-S-N-P. And it stands for Dual Eligible Special Needs Plan. Ah, uh, my grandson. It's my boy. Hey, Grandma. And a WellCare DSNP comes with a whole lot of these. As in WellCare gives me benefits I can use every day. And real human support. And answers I can understand. And I get benefits like $0 copays on prescriptions. And a WellCare Spendables debit card to pay for things like dental, utilities, and groceries. I can even use it to pay at the pump for gas. And that means a WellCare DSNP provides what I need when I need it. And that gives me the confidence I need to get through every day. The coverage you need and more. Call or visit wellcareyes.com to see if you qualify for more benefits. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Central Main Denture, Corinth Auto Parts, Greenway Equipment Sales, Katahdin Trust Company, Main Collision Center, and Smokey's Barbecue. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs, supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. 
create the perfect spaces in your home for 2024 at the Furniture Gallery. Entertain in style this year with a new dining set. Have room for everyone on movie nights with a big sectional and extra seating. Feel more rested with a new mattress from Serta, Restonic, or Nectar. Celebrate the new year with unbeatable values during our New Year blowout sale. Save up to 60% on clearance items here at the Furniture Gallery. Support our main family-owned business and save money. Happy New Year from our family to yours. The Furniture Gallery, Augusta, Fangor, Newport, and North Window. Now to New York City, where former President Donald Trump was in court in New York this morning in the civil defamation trial against him. He was expected to potentially take the stand, but now the case has been put on hold for medical reasons. E. Jean Carroll seeking at least $10 million in additional damages, saying Trump defamed her when he denied her accusations of sexual assault. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Former President Donald Trump was expected to take the stand in New York City today in the defamation trial against him. But instead, court adjourned until Tuesday with a juror and defense attorney reporting to the judge that they're not feeling well. The trial will help determine how much he'll have to pay in additional damages for defaming writer E. Jean Carroll. Carol now suing Trump a second time, accusing him of ruining her reputation and making her the target of violent threats. A jury has already found him liable for sexually assaulting her in a dressing room in a Manhattan department store in the 1990s and then defaming her. Trump still denying any wrongdoing in this latest case, even talking about the trial on the campaign trail this weekend. These are corrupt people, but I'm going for a trial tomorrow. All done by political operation. Last week, the judge putting the former president on notice that he could be kicked out of the courtroom if he keeps making disparaging side comments about Carol within earshot of the jury. Carol is seeking at least $10 million in damages as Trump bounces from the courtroom to the campaign trail. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Trump did as the judge said and postponed the citing the Trump primary tomorrow. The judge did not immediately rule the plaintiff's attorney opposed the delay. Lung cancer is the leading cancer killer among both men and women. However, young women might be more at risk. ABC's Tim Pulliam has more. For the first time in U.S. history, young women are being diagnosed with lung cancer at higher rates than young men. The American Cancer Society found that women aged 35 to 54 got lung cancer at a higher rate than men of that age between the years 2000 and 2019. This is a reversal of historical patterns, but the difference is not huge. Researchers don't yet know why this happened, but there are theories. Women have been somewhat slower than men to quit smoking. Women may be less likely than men to be offered screening for lung cancer. It's important for both men and women to do what they can to reduce risk and recognize warning signs. Early symptoms include a cough lasting for months, unexplained weight loss, coughing up blood, or shortness of breath that doesn't go away. Talk to your doctor about help quitting smoking. It's the leading cause of lung cancer in men and women. Test your house for the second leading cause of lung cancer, radon. Researchers say survival after a lung cancer diagnosis has been improving thanks to new targeted therapies and treatments. With this Medical Minute, I'm Tim Pulliam. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $249 a month, including 500 lease bonus cash. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. If you think about it, hash browns are the french fries of breakfast. Who says it's not french fries that are the hash browns of lunch and dinner? Mm. That's also true. Right now, you can get a savory, melty sausage burrito, crunchy hash browns, or these satisfying breakfast faves. Mix and match any two for just $3 at McDonald's. At AAA, 
Saving money means as much to us as it does to our members. Nikki saved her family over $450 by switching to AAA auto insurance. Marianne switched and saved $350. And Philip saved over $400. Now is a great time to review your auto insurance policy. AAA is here to help you with your auto, home, and life insurance needs. Call 844-AAA Insurance or visit AAA.com for an auto insurance quote today. AAA, we're always with you. Orono is more than just a college town. It's an affordable destination. Welcome to the Orono Arcade, where we have both modern and retro games. And for a new experience, check out our nine-hole black light mini golf course. Budget-friendly, fun for the whole family, with 13 restaurants within walking distance. We look forward to seeing you soon at the Orono Arcade. For the first time in two years, the world's largest natural ice skating rink reopens. On Saturday, Canada's famous Rideau Canal, Canal Skateway reopened to the public. The skateway spans about five miles and is part of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization World Heritage Site in Ottawa. Last year, skating enthusiasts couldn't enjoy the rink because of the lack of ice. The skateway was first opened more than 50 years ago. Well, the road I live on isn't that long, but it could certainly be a skating rink. Let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Today's full weather forecast is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. Alrighty, here we go. Small crowd advisory is posted through 10 a.m. on Tuesday after surf along the coast will be expected as we do move forward in time for today. As the wave heights are not bad for now, at around one to two feet according to the buoy, so not bad yet, but later on this afternoon, we'll be watching for more of these to increase. This buoy is showing around five feet for the wave heights, at least for the time being, and higher surf further out towards sea. But on land, though, we're partly cloudy for the time being. We'll be under a partly cloudy sky today with more clouds later this evening. There's a little bit of precipitation up in parts of Canada. A few returns on the radar here in Maine, but I do believe we'll stay dry today with a partly cloudy sky. Zooming things out, though, showing this cold front up in parts of the Midwest. Low pressure to the south here, helping to allow some frozen precipitation to develop in the Midwest, including some freezing rain, with high pressure helping to steer it, but high pressure helping to keep us dry across the region throughout the daytime period today. Futurecast moving forward, though, a partly cloudy sky will be common. We'll get more clouds in here later on tonight, but the clouds break up as we head towards early Tuesday morning with some sunshine, so that'll be pretty nice, right? But later on Tuesday morning, the clouds kind of move back in as we watch for another system that will start to approach from the south and west and going toward the north and east. So we'll start to track off towards the north and east throughout the day Wednesday. However, we'll have high pressure nearby, so how far this gets to the northeast will be the trick here. If high pressure is far Farther away from us, the system may try to move in a little bit more, but if, it's, if high pressure stays close, the system may have a hard time trying to move in, but some snow chances do exist Wednesday, at least for a bit. By later on Wednesday night to Thursday morning, a little bit of a wintry mix will be on the way. That will continue in the parts of Thursday night and also in the parts of Friday as well. So some travel issues may exist later this week as well. So we'll have to watch this system as we get a little bit closer. As for gusty winds, so we can reach up around 20 miles per hour throughout the daytime period today and also in the parts of tonight as well. Some of those gusty winds will We'll also continue through parts of your Tuesday also. But your forecast coming out for the rest of today, showing middle 30s, party cloudy and breezy, as southwest wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. For tonight, lower 20s, party cloudy, southwest wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, middle 30s, mostly cloudy and breezy, the north wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. Your healing hands massage extended forecast showing that snow chance moving in for the day on Wednesday, especially for the off towards the south and west. That wind mix is going on Thursday, highs in the upper 30s. We'll keep that winter mix going Friday with highs and low 40s. Thank you, Devin. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.